Today we're going to talk about how to start something like Battleship, but with TypeScript instead of just like JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a project. So I'm going to make something called, I'm going to call it, I'm not going to do a Battleship game. We'll just do a uh, terminal Hangman. game. Hangman. <laughs> I That would take me a minute to do. It's totally possible, but like, it's totally not crazy to do, but it would take me a minute. Um. Uh -huh trying to think i guess it could no i'm not going to do that that would that takes a minute because you have to figure out how to render things via ASCII, and it's yeah just, it's just time consuming you know what i mean so what i'm going to do is we'll just make a dumb terminal game i don't know we'll open it up the very I'm first not. thing is when we make a node package we all it is is we just have a folder basically and this folder is going to contain our project so in here what i'm going to do is you really only need a couple things one of them is you need an app, uh, I'm sorry, you need a package.json. You can create it directly like this. And if you do it, it will look fine, but then you have to fill everything out default yourself. And you might forget what those keys are. One thing you could do is you could type in npm init. And if you do this, it will generate a package.json for you. So let's uh, call it terminal game version one description. This is a fucking terminal game, bro. And we'll do the entry port is index.js. You can kind of enter through all this stuff. And actually, if you want to just enter through all that stuff at default and you don't really care about those things, which most of the time for our purposes, you don't need to, you can actually just type in npm init for like initialize dash y. Now that we have this, what we need is we need something that will run TypeScript for us. So first of all, we need to install TypeScript. TypeScript, we usually have as a developer dependency, because let's say you're building a website or something like that with TypeScript. Usually TypeScript doesn't exactly exist on the actual website. You're turning TypeScript into JavaScript. If you're curious how that works, what you could do- Yeah, the, what was it, the, not extrapolation, the something it, with a T. Transpilation is what you- Yeah, transpiling. So because of that, what we don't want is to install it as a regular dependency, because it's not, it doesn't matter at runtime. It only matters at compile time. So what we mm -hmm. what, what we do is we flag it with this save dev, and you're going to see what that does. Is now when I install TypeScript, it's going to install right here. Make sense? Dev dependencies is the keyword there. Now I'm going to type in. We're also. So just 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 because you put a dash dev there, it saved into dev dependencies? No, yes, the dash dash save dev. I think you also could do like a, I'm just going to do this for fun. Let's say I do save. I think you could also do dash capital D, but I'm not sure. We'll try it. Let's, let's try it with our next one, which is TSX. TSX is how we're going to run our TypeScript. It's just the easiest way. I'll show you oh, what nice. this TSX, it just allows us to... Let's say I have like an index.ts here and I say, uh, let's go const say hi to person, which is a string. And then we'll just do console.log person. If I try to run this with like node, node does not know what TypeScript is. So if I type in node index.ts, it just explodes. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Because it's looking for a JavaScript file, but I'm giving it a TypeScript file. Now, if I get rid of this and I try doing the same thing again, it works just fine. Why? Because this is valid JavaScript right now, even though it's a TypeScript file, right? So now I go in here, mm -hmm. boom, it works. And we'll say, say hi to Jimmerton. And it runs it just because it doesn't actually care what the extension name is when you run node. But what we want here is for this to be a string. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, instead of node, I'm going to type in npx, which allows me to use a package from in this node modules. I'm going to type in npx, tsx, and I'm going to type in index.ts. And then boom, now I have, have it ran. Make sense? Mm -hmm. cool. This is actually easier than it used to be. It used to be that you'd have to use TS node and you'd have to configure it. Now, one thing I do recommend doing, so TypeScript works better, is typing in npx tsc dash dash no emit. 
I'm sorry. Mm. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do TSC init is what I meant to do. Initialize it. So this sets up a TS config JSON for you. And you'll see, like, for example, this will now yell at me, whereas before it was not yelling at me. That's what you want out of TypeScript. Also, <clears throat> if you want, like, what? go for it. Oh, is that like the linting stuff? Sort of. This is your configuration for how TypeScript works. And you can see, like, these are all things that you can add or remove from here, right? But the point is, this configures TypeScript for you. Does that make sense? Okay. Then, <clears throat> if you want to, and I recommend doing this even if you're not using TypeScript, you can initialize a linter, like ESLint. So, for example, I could type in npm install, and this is also going to be a development dependency, ESLint. And also just to see what's going on in our package.json, when I run this, you're going to see my, uh, this is going to change. Where's the NPX coming from? NPX you get for free if you already have Node installed. Both okay. NPM and NPX come for free at, uh, when you install Node, at least a more recent version of it. More recent meaning like past five years. Make sense? Then, <clears throat> yeah, I understand that. Then what's the difference between making a .ts file and a .tsx file? TSX is for if you're doing like React or something like that. Oh, okay. Don't worry about TSX for right now. But TSX is basically like you could have something that says div in your JavaScript and what your compiler is going to do is it's actually going to turn this into a new element. Oh, like an, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it'll be called a div. And then it will have a children property, you know, and then in here you have your children element, but it turns it into some kind of object like this, even though it looks like this, which makes it really nice for, for example, building front end UIs with react. Does that make sense? Is that, the, is that the declarative versus imperative thing? It's, a, it's specifically TSX is saying it's a TypeScript file that uses JSX, which is a syntax for that templating language, if that makes sense. Okay. Don't worry it's too probably much. Going, it's a, it's going a little lot over of my head. Think you're touching it once. I wouldn't stress too much about it for this project. This All TSX right. is a different TSX. That... That's probably why you asked that. This TSX is not for a .tsx file. This TSX is just a way of running TypeScript. It's different okay. from when you name a file .tsx. All this does is just compile TypeScript. That's all that it does. Okay. So this is different than a .tsx file. Sorry, that's confusing, but it's the way it goes. Okay. Okay, from here, this is pretty much going to feel like building a regular package now. Like we did all the, oh, oh wait, we do have to set up ESLint. So if that's just an XP, uh, uh, NPX ESLint init, and it's going to ask you some questions. And now I could say, let's check syntax and find problems is what I normally do. Uh, we could use import export. We use none of these. It does use TypeScript and it's going to run on Node and not in the browser in this case, because we're literally running it from our terminal, right? Uh, yeah. Boom. And I'm just going to click yes. I will use NPM. And boom, I did all this. Now we have ESLint. Now, ESLint and TypeScript both check different things. So, like TypeScript will check this kind of shit, like your type system. So, if I go here and I pass in a number, it's going to say, hey, you fucked that up. Does that make sense? Okay. However, if I create a variable and I don't use it, and you can hover over this, the thing that it says is breaking right now is this ESLint rule, no unused variables. So both of them are good. I like using both of them. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's start doing shit. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to download some sort of like TypeScript, uh cli no typescript we'll do uh read line 
node or something like that. I don't know which one to use. I think most people use read line sync, so I should probably just use that. So what I'll probably do is just do an npm install read line sync. Now this is a regular npm install. And what you'll see is instead of going in dev dependencies, it goes in the actual dependencies. So let's see, I'll close this out. Don't save it, don't save it. And if I go to package.json, you'll see that now in the actual dependencies, it has read line sync. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Also, I will likely add the types package for that. A lot of the default node packages want this. Otherwise, you don't get TypeScript working out of the box. So now, oh, actually, I should have switched this into my dev dependencies instead. Because again, those types don't matter for the actual runtime. And now that I have this, now I should be able to start doing shit. And it will be nicer to work with because I downloaded those types. So let's just play around with it. I'm going to type in import from read line sync. And you're going to see now I can kind of explore what's going on here. So I can see what I get. I get a key in, I get a key in pause. I get a prompt, prompt CL, question, question email, question new password, set default options. These are all functions that I can call. Anything confusing here? No. Cool. So I think the good ones to use are like, let's try key in. And all that I'm going to do is I'm going to type in console.log. Welcome to the cool game. Uh, and then we're going to say, press any key to continue. Okay. So I'm just going to call key in here. And we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to try and run this file. How am I going to do it? I'm going to type in npx, tsx, and I'm going to type in index.ts. Now that I run this, it says, welcome to the cool game. Press any key to continue. I'm going to press I. I do that, it's open. Make sense? Okay, so is that just waiting for, <clears throat> Keen's just waiting for you to press in any key? I believe and that so. key gets stored? Uh, and you know, you could look and see A is actually, one of the nice things about TypeScript is now it looks like maybe it gives you the value of that. So for example, I have a hunch it's actually going to give me that value. I'm not sure. But if I go here and I press I, it says A is I. So I have typed in I. And so you do get the value of that key as well. But you could also just kind of use it as a pause. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think there might be a way to do it without actually displaying the letter. Key in pause is probably what you want there, actually. I'm willing to bet if I did key in pause here. Now, I imagine it won't like show the letter. Another thing that you could do is if you don't want to keep typing in npx tsc, the name of the file, you could make a script. So I can just type in, let's go ahead and make a script called start that shit. And in here, I'm just going to, I don't need to precurse this with NPX. I could actually just type in TSX index dot TS. And if I do this, now I could type in like NPM runs start that shit. And I do this, and now it runs the game. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Sweet. So this is a rough, a rough idea. I, I wanted to explicitly choose a stupid name because I wanted it to be clear that start is not like a reserved keyword. Like, obviously, start that shit is definitely not a reserved keyword. But this is just yeah. what it's called. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think I'm familiar with that from, like, Maven, where you can just write, like, build clean. Is that where you like put those scripts? Yep, yep, yep. So now from here, it's just build a game. So let's make a, a silly game and then I'm probably going to stop it. So that way I don't take up the whole class. But like, let's just make a stupid game. Like a number guesser? Yeah, sure. 
And that's a good, great idea. Okay. So we're going to say, how does math.random work again? I always forget. Node. I think it chooses a random number between zero and one. So if I do that random number between zero and one, so what I could do is multiply it by 10 and then do a math.seal around that. And then that should give me the uh, math.floor is what I'll do. And then now this should give me like a random number each time. So one through 10, cool. Sweet, get it? So now I can just guess the number, right? So yeah. maybe when I start this game, what I'll do is I'll say, welcome to the number guesser game. <laughs> My great guy. I don't I wasn't thinking that much about this. Okay. Press any conti continue, dude. Great. Awesome. So now we have this. Starting the game is going to be a lot like, well, we got to come up with a number. So I'm actually going to come up with a number before the game starts. Um, there's other, all sorts of ways you could do this, but I'm going to say my random number is going to equal. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to be smart about this. I'll make a function called generate one through. Actually, it should be one through nine is what it'll generate. But I actually want to do one through ten. Generate. You do a plus one, you'll never get a zero. Yeah, that I could do. I was also gonna. I was also gonna say you could do math dot seal too. Either way would work. But so I'll say generate number one through ten, and <laughs> this won't take anything. But I'll return math dot seal math dot random times ten. Make sense? And if I do this, now, in here, I could say my number equals generate number 1 through 10. And in here, what I'll say is console.log. What? Actually, not console.log. I'll need like a, uh, actually, in theory, you could use that key in here. Key in. So we could say. Const what or we'll we'll console dot log what number do you guess? Cool. Something like this. And in here we'll say my guess equals key in and now we'll say if my guess equals the number, whoops, then we can console.log, great work, and why is this mad? Oh, I could say if parse int, the guess equals the number, and console.log, great work, else, and I can return from here, and if that's not the case, let's just run this start command again. Something like this. Then all I need to do is invoke this start command here. Now, I'm I'm going kind of fast on this. If you want to slow down and ask questions, that's fine too. I just kind of got the hunch you, you kind of knew how this part of how to do this pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in npx or npm run start. And now it's going to say, welcome, press entity to continue. I'm going to press O. It says, what number do you guess? I'm going to go five. Nope. Four. Three, 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 two, one, nine, eight, seven. Nope. Oh, there we go. I got it. It was seven. That's so cool. Seven's like my lucky number. Let's go. That makes sense? Kind of on what's going on? Or do you want, want to ask some questions? Uh, Just what, what was the percentage sign? What percentage on the that? console? It was like eight percent. Oh, it's probably some weird logging thing. Let's see if it does it again. Any key? I think it might have been because I hit shift and press five. Oh. 
I think it might have just been a mistake. Sweet. Does that, that feel like a good intro to you, or do you want me to do anything further? Or No, I, I understood all that. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. That was a fun one, because I feel like people would not know how to do Battleship with TypeScript otherwise. <laughs> so uh, hopefully hmm. you get some use out of that. Awesome. Sweet. I'm going to stop that lesson and definitely upload that one. If I can find the stop.